What's going on guys? Welcome back to our channel. We are back with some mobility. Woo! <laughs> what is mobility? <laughs> stretching. <laughs> Dynamic stretching. Yep, before every workout, something that often gets overlooked is stretching. And there's a lot of reasons why you should. So the warm up we're gonna take you through today is going to be a dynamic warm up. There's a lot of misinformation around whether or not you should be performing static stretching or dynamic stretching before your workouts. We're here to give you the facts. What you want to do before a workout is dynamic stretching. You don't want to do any static movement before a workout. It's not going to help you and in most cases it can actually hinder your performance. So there are three main reasons why you're going to want to start with a dynamic stretching routine as part of your warm-up. So the first is to increase core body temperature. Second is to prepare the nervous system for exercise and three is to lengthen, strengthen, and stabilize your body in preparation for more advanced movement to come. So static stretching basically means finding a position, elongating that muscle group, and then holding it for 15, 20, 30 seconds. So it's really the stretching that we were used to growing up, whether it was in PE or in our high school sports. Um, they always told us, make sure you guys get a good stretch in. So we immediately started doing things like this where we would just hold and, and we would stretch the muscle out. And those are good stretches, but they have their place elsewhere, not before the workout, after, after the workout. So when we get into our warm ups, typically we'll do a general warm up just to get uh, blood flow, just to heat the body up, something where it's like five to 10 minutes of about uh, low to moderate intensity treadmill elliptical, any kind of uh, cardio equipment or any kind of general motion, or whether it be jumping jacks or something with a rope or uh, ladders, things that are going to be uh, very generalized, very easy on the body, just to kind of get you going. And then as the warm up continues, we start to get into those dynamic drills that we are gonna take you through. Those are a little bit more uh, movement specific to kind of get you ready for what you're about to do during your main lift or workout. We're gonna hit our entire body. So we're gonna get our entire body warmed up the proper way. Yeah, just give you guys some ideas and then some variations, some beginner and more advanced movements. We're gonna show you some of our favorites. We're gonna take you through about six exercises, maybe a few more. Yeah, you guys can take some, you can take it all, apply it, uh, and hopefully you find something that's uh, helpful. Here we go. All right, let's get it. All right, first exercise is going to be lower body focus. This one's called a deep squat to hamstring stretch. So we're gonna turn sideways so you guys can see this, but typically you wanna get into about a hip to shoulder width stance, toes slightly outward. Uh, we're gonna get into a basic just body weight squat to start. So when we do that, we need to think about um, coming down, keeping our feet flat on the ground, driving the weight into our heels, and making sure that our knees are following our toes the entire time. We don't want them to buckle inward or outward, typically the inward motion is what people uh, often have happen to them. So make sure that as we come down, our chest stays up and we drive those knees outward. So we're gonna get down into squat depth, which means the crease of our hips should break the plane of our knee. And then from there, we're going to hinge back into an RDL type motion. So we're just gonna show you guys um, the motion and then we'll kind of break it down a little bit more. So chest up, sit back, we're gonna squat on down, Hit that position, we're gonna hinge back, meaning we're only going to use our hips to straighten our legs out, so we come back, chest still stays up, our back still stays flat, so we don't wanna lose it, so we're here, and then we stand up using those hamstrings as we bring those hips through. Squeeze those glutes. Yeah, you got it. And then from there, it's all about just finding that rhythm, and then as you guys get used to it, you can start to work on your range of motion, working on trying to get a little bit lower and lower. But again, we don't want those heels to come off of the ground, Work on that ankle mobility. So we're here, squat on down, hinge it back, stand it on up, and repeat it. Squat it, hinge it, stand it up. And we're typically gonna go for about 10 to 15 reps. And 
again, it just kind of depends on just how loose you guys want to get. Depends on what you guys are doing for your workout that day. So that was one. What do we got for number two? Number two, we're moving on to upper body. We've got some bent over T's and bent over Y's. So we're focusing on our shoulders, particularly our rear deltoid. So the back part of your shoulder here. We're gonna start with our feet about hip width apart, slight bend in our knees. Again, we're hinging at the hips like we did with our Romanian deadlift in the previous movement. So you should feel a little stretch in your hamstrings here too. You're gonna bring your chest closer to the floor, but keeping a neutral spine, so a nice flat back, keeping those shoulders pulled back and not letting them round as you bring your arms forward. So we're starting here in this position, nice tight core, nice tight pillar, so we're staying strong through the hips, our torso and our shoulders. So here is our starting position. We're gonna come out to the side with both arms, thumbs pointed up. You can stop when your wrists are at about shoulder height. Squeeze your shoulder blades before you come right back down. That's our bent over T. We're gonna move right into our bent over Y. So you're coming up at about a 45 degree angle with your shoulders. Same thing here, thumbs pointed up. Squeeze your shoulder blades come right back down, right back into the T. Again, we're stopping the movement when our wrists are at about shoulder height, so you don't need to go any higher. Making sure you're squeezing those shoulder blades and you're keeping those hips back too. All right, at times you might find that you're losing that tightness in your core as you feel yourself start to lift that chest up. Don't do that. Sit those hips back even more. Bring your belly button into your spine as you work through those T's and your Y's. So you want to make sure that you're moving in a nice slow and controlled movement uh, because it is easy to kind of let those shoulder blades move all over the place if you're not super careful and if you're not super aware of how you're moving your arms through that movement. Right. With everything we do, there's always purpose to it. If there's not, you just kind of go through the motions. Uh, you're really not going to be helping yourself out a whole lot. So. Right, you might as well not even be doing this warm up if you're not consciously thinking about what your body is doing and why. Yeah, treat the warm up like you would your workout. All right, movement number three. What do we got? We've got our hamstring stretch with arms feet. So, with this one, again, we're going to focus on our hinge at the hips. So, we're starting off in a staggered stance. You're going to line your front heel up with your back toes little bit further away so you can see here. Slight bend in both knees. Again, we're hinging at the hips, so we're shooting those hips back. So you should feel good stretching that front hamstring. You're going to bring your arms down to your sides. You're going to scoop down and up, reaching up as high as you can, circling those arms back down to your sides nice and wide. So we're hitting our lower body, primarily our hamstrings, so the back of our leg with this one. And then we're also hitting our upper body as well. So we're working through the lats, in the shoulders with that little pillar stretch at the top and then arm circle all the way back down. So let's do a few more on this side. Keep that right leg forward. Again, hinging at the hips and then sweeping down and up with those arms. So with each rep, you can move a little bit faster, but again, like you said, make sure that you're performing this movement with intention and purpose. So one cue I like to give with the hip hinge is to pretend that you have a wall behind you and you're trying to reach your glutes to that wall. If you come down in a vertical motion, you're not gonna reach those glutes to the wall. So you have to come back in a horizontal fashion that will allow for a greater stretch in the hamstrings. All right, moving on to exercise number four, we have a hand walk to push up. Colin, take it away. All right guys, so we're gonna be working on our hamstrings, our hips, uh, and then we're also going to be working on our upper body, so our shoulders, chest, triceps, uh, with that push-up motion. So when we start this off, we want to think about reaching down. We're in that hip width stance. So we reach down, hands are going to come out onto the ground. We're going to place them onto the ground. That's going to need to be our starting position. We want to think about pushing that butt back, right? So we can try to keep that back as flat as we can. And then as we walk it out, we need to be thinking about what our hips are doing. So it's gonna start out with our hips pushed up into the air, our butt up into the air, and we need to walk it out. We need to make sure that our hips never sag past our torso. So I'm gonna start out here, and I'm gonna walk it out, and we're gonna walk it into that same push-up position that we were in earlier, where our hands are underneath our shoulders, 
and then we're in a straight line from there. So I'm gonna do my push up, make sure, again, our form is there, our chest falls between our hands, and then we're gonna walk it back in, our butt's gonna go skyward, we're gonna try to keep our legs as straight as we can to where they're not quite locked. So if your legs are locked, it puts a lot of that pressure behind your knees, so we need to make sure that they are bent slightly and then they stay that way throughout the motion. So again, we push that butt back, get our hands down, walk it out, legs stay straight. Think about those hips, get your push up, walk it back in, and then we would go right back out into our reps from there. So a great dynamic stretch again for those hamstrings, hips, and then our upper body. And then if you guys aren't ready to do a full on push up on your toes, you can certainly come down to your knees. So to modify, again, like Colin said, push those hips back, back stay nice and flat, reach your fingers down to your toes. We're walking out into our high plank position. Bring your knees down to the floor, perform your push up, and then you can lift those knees back before you walk your hands back to your toes. So again, modify as needed, work with what you have, always go up over time. All right, moving on to movement number five. Meet me down on the floor. We're moving on to something we call a supine single arm lat stretch. So supine meaning we're on our backs. Feet are gonna be about hip width apart. One thing here, I'm gonna scoot over just a little bit so you can better see, is that if you have space between your upper and your lower back, I want you to tuck that pelvis into the floor so your back is completely flat. Now, if you're arching your back, that's not gonna be good for this movement. It's not good for your lower back. It's not good for your glutes. It's not good for any part of you. So, tuck that pelvis into the floor so you can't fit your hand through any open space that may have been there before. So that's the first thing. Next, you're gonna bring your hands together, palms together across your chest. We're gonna slowly, Extend one arm backwards, keeping your back nice and flat. Don't let that back flare arch. Reach back as far as you can, stretching out our lats, and then we're gonna come right back to center, switching sides. So in order to keep your back nice and flat to get the most out of this stretch here, you have to keep your core nice and tight. So you have to squeeze. This one can be performed with both arms at one time. So to do so, obviously both arms will go back at one time. Your goal is to reach back as far as you can before you come back to this starting position here. Okay, we're gonna move on to exercise number six. Colin is gonna take us through this one. So this one's called the rollover to V-sit. It's gonna stretch our lower back, kind of all through our mid-back, and then we're going to uh, work on our hamstrings and then our adductors, so the inside part of our thighs. So with this one, we're gonna lay down on the ground to start on our back, so again, that supine position. Make sure you guys can see me. So with this one, um, there's a couple different ways to do it. Everybody's got different ranges of motion, different flexibility, so ease into this motion. What I'm gonna have us do is lay back, legs are gonna be straight, arms are gonna be at my side, so I'm gonna be pushing my arms down into the ground, I'm gonna bring my legs back overhead. That's where I'm gonna get that lower back stretch. If you're just starting this motion, we don't really need to get too far back. So I want us to be able to get our feet back overhead. So you wanna to try to keep your legs as close to your head, your torso as you can. So then once we're there, we need to be thinking about stretching that back. So I'm gonna come back overhead if you're able to. We wanna bring our feet to the floor and we're gonna go right into a rollover, spread our legs we're trying to reach through while keeping those hamstrings, our legs flat on the ground. As I do that, that's gonna really light that uh, inner thigh area up, our hamstrings, and again, that lower back. So then once I'm ready to go again, I reset, bring those legs back overhead, and nice smooth motion, and now I try to reach a little farther each and every time. So if you're able to, try to get those legs back as far as you can, uh, but if this is the first time you're doing it or you have lower back limited mobility, then just bringing those legs back as far as you can, then rolling into that V-sit is a good option for you. And then obviously you're going to use momentum with this exercise, but you don't want to rely on that momentum. So in order to get the most out of it, as you're coming out of that V-sit, you want to make sure that you're 
following the movement and you're not just going back into that movement you know, using momentum. Another thing too is that if you're not ready to bring your legs back over your head, you can certainly just tuck your knees into your chest and then come into that V set from there. Another thing too, if you don't feel comfortable spreading those legs just yet, you can keep your knees into your chest and you can rock until your feet are flat on the floor, then you can pull back into it and then you can come right back here to this position too. So start where you need to with this one and you can progress as you improve. Exercise seven. We've got world's greatest stretch. The one best stretch. Favorites. Best stretch ever. Yep. Okay, so with this one, I like to start this one with a reverse lunge. Sometimes um, people like to start it in a high plank position and go from there. So Colin will demonstrate it that way. I'll demonstrate it this way. We're going to start with feet hip width apart, slide bending your knees. You're going to bring your arms across your chest, and you're going to take it back into a reverse lunge, making sure you get that back leg back far enough so that you're not leaning forward onto your toes. So you want your weight to be pretty evenly distributed. And what I like to do is I like to bring my opposite arm to the leg that's in front down to the floor, making a 90 degree angle with the other arm. And then we're going to rotate on up towards the side of the front leg, holding this position for a few seconds before you come right back down. I like to bring it back up into this initial reverse lunge hold or split squat hold and then bring my back leg to meet my front leg. So that's one rep. You know, you can do anywhere from three to five to seven or however many you need to get your whole body warmed up. But this is such a good full body stretch. Hence the name, World's Greatest Stretch. Be sure to match however many reps you do on one side with your other side as well. And then Colin's going to demonstrate a different way to kind of get into this stretch, different variation. Right, so her way is pretty total body intensive. Like she was saying, it's pretty difficult for some people to be able to get back into a reverse mm -hmm. lunge and then get into that in-step position. Uh, so something I like to have my athletes do or have myself do is just get into a push-up position. So just like earlier with that inform to push-up, we want to make sure that we're in that position to where our hands are directly below our shoulders, our hips are in line and we're squeezing those glutes. From this position, I'll kick one foot out to the outside of my hand as far as I can to where I can still keep my foot flat on the ground and be able to get that stretch. So I don't want to be tiptoeing. So I'm here, I come through. Now once I'm here, now I'm going to take my left arm. I'm going to open it up the same way Katie did, bring that sucker back in, and then I'm going to bring myself right back into that position. Squeeze my glutes, my hips, make sure I'm in a good position, and then I'm going to alternate back and forth for my reps. So just a little bit easier of a way to get into it, uh, but a little bit less intense. All right, those are our seven full body mobility exercises that you guys can start incorporating into your next warm up or into your warm ups going forward. Um, hopefully you've learned a lot from us about these exercises and the importance of warming up before you work out. Super, 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 super important. No static stretching here. Dynamic stretching is what is going to be the best. Right, and I think it's important to, to basically state that these aren't just exercises that you just do for every single workout. Um, you wanna be able to vary what you do, just kinda like how you vary what you do um, during your lifts. Yeah, no, Colin made a really great point too. Um, you know, these exercises aren't the end all be all. There are so many other exercises, other movements that you can incorporate into your mobility routines and your warm ups. Um, you have to tailor your warm up to the movements that you'll be performing for that day. So, you know, for example, would it make sense to, you know, perform those single arm lat stretches as your only warm up exercise? when you're about to go do a lower body workout. That doesn't make any sense at all. So you need to keep that in mind too. You know, the seven that we showed are great for performing before a full body workout. Um, but again, like it's important for you to change up even those movements um, to match the full body movements that you'll be performing in your workout, um, depending on what day it is and what you have programmed. Yeah, try some of these out and uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Let us know what you wanna see. Um, because like she said, we have a lot of different uh, movements in our arsenal. So 
whether it be stretching, whether it be lifting, just things you guys want to know, want to see us do, want to learn, let us know. Yeah, we have a lot of knowledge to share, so drop your questions and your comments in the comments below. Send us a message on Instagram. You know, we're here to help and educate you. So thanks for watching. Finger guns. <laughs> and <laughs> we'll catch you in the next one. <laughs> See you guys.